Today, in this episode of Can We Talk About Your WordPress Projects and our mini series of the five days of focus, we're going to talk about how to define your WordPress project scope. First, what exactly is project scope? According to most experts, project scope is defined as a detailed outline of all aspects of a project, including all related activities, resources, timelines, and deliverables, as well as the project's boundaries. That's really a little too broad, in my opinion. In web development, when we're talking about the scope of a project, here's what we're really talking about. We're talking about the stuff that's in scope that you will do specifically, or the client will do, then the stuff that's out of scope, what you will not do specifically. Anything that's not in scope is out of scope. Well, that means everything in the universe is out of scope and that's just not specific enough. It's very important to detail out what is out of scope, just like you're detailing what's in scope. This might seem obvious, but let's look at why your scope statement is so important in the first place. Your scope statement is your very first step to controlling scope creep. That section of your proposal document is really your proposed solution. This is what is going to be included in this project. It also sets the boundaries of where the project ends. Clients make assumptions. You may have told them a million times that you don't do content but they just assumed you were going to do the content. This sets the boundaries for that. It sets the proper client expectations about what those boundaries are. As you review the in scope and out of scope with the client, it helps to clarify business objectives and it also creates upsell opportunities. Now that is not one of those things that you purposefully use as an upsell opportunity, but as you go through the in scope and the out of scope section of your proposal, you may come across something you've listed as out of scope and the client says, wait a minute, wait a minute, I really want that. So you can add it in and then change the estimate for the project because it was something that you didn't think the client wanted or needed and then they decided they did. So what should this scope statement look like? Well, it's really broken down like this. You've got a general paragraph and that comes from your business requirements you discovered during the pre-proposal discovery. Your in scope section comes from your project plan template because those are the activities that you're going to complete. The business requirements and the initial pre-proposal discovery meeting, all of that helps you define what is in scope for this project. Now, I also break that in scope section down into two subsections. One is what's in scope that I'm going to do and what's in scope the client's going to do. This is another opportunity to educate your client to set that expectation. They can't just hand this over to you and you're going to get the project done. They have to be involved all along the way. So this helps reinforce that expectation. Your out of scope is going to come from your project plan template and your initial pre-proposal discovery, because you're basically going to take the activities and tasks you normally do for a website, and you're going to eliminate the ones that are um, out of scope. So that's how it comes from your project plan template. What a general statement should look like. And, and this is just an example. There are other ways to do this, but basically you're saying your company name will create a certain number of page website. And if you don't know the number of pages at the time you do the proposal, you can leave that out and just say, your company will create a website for the client's company with a primary objective of whatever that primary objective is based on your business requirements. Maybe it's lead generation. Maybe it's a sales funnel. Maybe it's an online store, whatever that primary business objective is. Then the project will be completed in whatever number of phases you're going to use. It will involve whichever individuals it's going to involve or departments or locations or business functions, whatever needs to go there. So the client knows who's to be involved. It helps to specifically name who at the client, the individual is going to be involved if you know them at this point. And it covers the following activities and deliverables. So. That's your opening statement, something very general, but clearly states what the scope of the project is. If you've got numbers like numbers of pages and numbers of phases, anything like that you can put in that sets those boundaries, 
That's what you should put in that general paragraph. After that, the way I break it down is with a chart. This makes it much easier. And these are activities from the project plan. Notice there are three columns. There's in us, that looks like in us, but it's really supposed to be in us, the people writing the proposal, in you, the client, and out. I put an X into the proper column for this particular project. And this is not an exhaustive list. This is the list from my project plan, but your list may look quite different than that, especially if you're not doing training. So I've got conduct training and creating training materials and that sort of thing in there. That might not be part of what you do. You may want to still list it and put it as out of scope so that the client knows for sure those things are out of scope. Okay, so here is all the activities, but where are the deliverables that I mentioned? Now they should be listed next, along with a brief description of each one. These should be the deliverables that require approval. Now in our project plan and the way that I break down the website specification, the planning part of the project, we have four major deliverables. That's the statement of work, the test plans, the website draft. We'll just call that one website draft. We'll get to that in a minute. And then the final website. But the statement of work is really the final deliverable after you've gotten approval on all the smaller pieces that are shown on this slide as sub bullets. You may not break yours down this same way, but the way I teach it in the academy is a site map, which leads to let wireframes, which validates the page layout that then validates and refines the content requirements. Cause now we have a spot for all, each piece of content. How's the website supposed to function? What are the functional requirements? And then styling and branding, which of course is colors and that sort of thing. So the test plans, now you're not going to give your test plans to your client to approve, but the user acceptance test plans, some, it depends on the size of the project, whether I have the client look over those project plans and approve them or not, so you can make that determination on your own. Those are the activities a client will be carrying out. That's another reason you want to include test plans as a deliverable, because it gives the client concrete instructions on what they're supposed to test and how they're supposed to test it. Now, when it comes to website drafts, you're going to have one or more of those. And that's different for every client and every project, usually depending on the complexity of the site. But you decide that up front. Decide how many drafts there are going to be up front because then you don't get into that continuous cycle of review and correct something and then they find something else and then you've got another review cycle. You want to get out of that vicious hamster wheel. Then you've got your final website. So these are the deliverables. You would, in this document, give a description of what each one of these deliverables is. Very short. It doesn't even have to be but one sentence. But that way, the client knows what to expect in terms of the scope of what they're going to receive in terms of deliverables. Now, let's talk about acceptance criteria real quick. I tell you all the time, you need to agree on acceptance criteria for deliverables up front. That is true, but the way you handle the acceptance criteria is that you put the acceptance criteria for the completed site in the proposal. All those other deliverables, if you tried to put the criteria for acceptance in the proposal, it's just too much. So we do that separately prior to creating each deliverable. We tell the client, okay, we're getting ready to do wireframes. And this is what we're looking for in this wireframe document. Here are the criteria for acceptance. For example, the layout satisfies the client in terms of where the content should go. But there's, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. Now, you might think that acceptance criteria for the final website might be really lengthy, but you'd be wrong. Here's an example of the acceptance criteria that I use. The acceptance criteria is that the site has been tested by my company and has passed all the tests. The, the site has been tested by the client per the test plans that I gave them and it passed all tests. The website's been moved to the live environment and the website is accessible by anyone visiting the URL for the site. You may go a little further into what your acceptance criteria is. If you're doing, that's evidence you should be using test plans. 
because all of that stuff comes out in the test plan. Once the test plans have been tested and then anything's been remediated that needed to be, that's pretty much approval. It's done. It's ready. So you don't have to list specific things like the site has an e-commerce store with a hundred products in it. The site has these colors. The site has this layout, these fonts. You don't have to put that in the acceptance criteria for the site because that's going to be included in the test plans. Well, let's do a quick review of what we covered today before we wrap up. A well-defined scope statement is the very first step to controlling scope creep. Within the Project Managers Academy, we've got the scope creep elimination roadmap, which is super, super helpful in focusing simply on scope creep. And one of the very first things that you need to do is learn how to write a good scope statement. Your scope statement needs to include a general paragraph followed by what's in scope that you will do, what's in scope that the client will do, and what is out of scope for the project um, as a whole. What are your deliverables that are going to require approval from the client with a description? If you want more information about your scope statement, your proposal, how to control scope creep as a whole, you guessed it inside the WP Project Managers Academy. Now, if you join the free program, you get immediate access to WordPress Project Management 101, which when you complete it, gives you the opportunity to get certified as a WP Project Manager Level 1. In terms of your scope statement, we give you an um, annotated outline for your master services agreement or contract and an annotated outline for your proposal. I don't call it a template because everybody uses different formats for delivering the proposal. This is like, what are the sections and what should be in each section? Now you can find out more about the free program at that link, wproadmaps.com forward slash join us. But if you want a more done for you version of this with all the sample language, most likely you'll want to join the premium membership and take advantage of this full launch special. We've been soft launching this program for almost a year. Now we're in full launch mode. I'm in the process of starting to run some ads. We've got two new students this week. We're hopefully going to get a few more this week and hopefully those ads will pay off and we'll get a lot more students in here. So that full launch special is almost a 50% discount on the monthly subscription. You get locked in at that price. You can cancel at any time and all details are at that link. You can sign up for either one at that same link. The premium program also includes Project Management 101 and the complete Project Management Roadmap for WordPress. It gives you a whole lot more done-for-you assets that you can take, modify, and start using right away. And the done-for-you downloads we give you for dealing with your scope statement include the ones on this slide. We've got more example language for your proposal, more example language for your MSA. I give you a sample completed proposal for a law firm website project. Inside the premium membership, there's a 20% discount code for monster contracts. And the more I'm separating the MSA and the proposal into two separate documents, I am making massive updates to them that are going to be a much better way of doing that. But there's a lot that I don't include because it's simply the best way to find it is with monster contracts. And so Nathan was kind enough to give all of you who enroll in the premium program a 20% discount on monster contracts. Also in there, the acceptance criteria cheat sheet where I give you sample acceptance criteria for all those different deliverables. That can be really helpful. So remember now that full launch special is only good till the end of January. And the sooner you sign up, the sooner you can start focusing on improving your agency in 2021. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about why approval doesn't matter. It's the old approval versus acceptance thing. We're going to talk a lot more about that acceptance criteria. Until tomorrow, remember to always stay productive stay strong, and never stop learning. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thank you for watching.